Zane Claude Fulcher with Otters TV here with Preston Leidenbach. We just wrapped up a 24 hour <laughs> stretch and we played three baseball games within that time frame. So I'm tired. Are you tired? I'm very tired. No. Especially after last night's marathon game that was supposed to be just seven innings as a part of the doubleheader. Yeah, so we had one game that went seven innings. Right. Another game today went nine, and then we had another one go 11. So. Let's see, that'd be 27. Yeah, that, that's actually a good observation. Yeah. Luckily, we didn't have a fourth game like Major League Baseball because that might yeah. have gone 13. That might have. <laughs> so. Today was a big game for Evansville. Right. They had a lead. Austin Nicely, I thought, pitched really well mm -hmm. when he had runners on base. Yeah, he, that's the thing. He was able to kind of pitch his way out of certain situations. Um, again, he's not going to really overpower anybody too much with getting the strikeout. But again, he was able to pitch out of situations and even pitch out, um, I thought, in a pretty good way where his defense kind of let him down a little bit here at times today. And overall, again, uh, with back-to-back -back starts, pitched very well. His first start last week at Juliet here today. Um, starting again to really find his way into the rotation and start to settle in here. You, know, you mentioned the defense, he gave up four runs, all four were unearned. Yeah. I mentioned he gave up the eight hits, his ERA in two starts is now under one. Right, and that's an unbelievable start because again, uh, first two stars going into the Frontier League, maybe some jitters, may not be uh, what you may not know what to expect. However, on the flip side, the batters in the uh, opposing team may not know what to expect from him as much because mm -hmm. again, um, the scouting report may not be as developed, so for him, just got to keep finding ways to adjust and get better because obviously these teams will start picking up his tendencies, but overall a great start so far for Austin nicely to the 2018 season. Toby Thomas had two home runs this weekend right. within the 24-hour span. 24 hours. How impressive has he been? He is so impressive because in our broadcaster, Sam Jelinek, and I were talking the other day, he just does everything in a quiet manner. The other day, he, uh, in the Juliet series, two hits each game, you wouldn't expect it because, again, he just does it so quietly. His defense is so quiet as well. Uh, unfortunately, he, he's had a couple unlucky balls bounce his way in some cases, but, again, everything about him is very quiet. He just goes about his business. Um, and, again, you would think the shortstop providing the power, you don't see that too much, but he's been consistently providing power as well as just good key situational hits from that three hole in Andy McCauley's lineup. Yeah, if you come to a game at Bossy Field and you're looking for a place to park, do not park beyond the left field foul pole because every home run that Toby Thomas has hit here right. has been down that left field line close to Heidelbach. Yeah, close to Heidelbach and not only every home run ball, but we've seen a lot of foul balls that have the home run distance but not stay fair. But again, yeah, not a not a good place to be uh, parking the car here at Bossy Field. And one other thing that's really stood out to me is Ryan Long. He's yes. one of the returners from last year. There's only a handful of them. He's batting around 370. He's right. been really impressive. And the thing that's so impressive about it is he was a late addition to the to the Otters team last year. And he's already kind of stepped up into a leadership role almost, which normally you would not see that until they players like Jeff Gardner, who's now going into his second full season with the Otters after joining the team in 2016. But yeah, right along, starting to embrace the leadership role a little bit, and obviously a big tone setter at the top of the lineup getting on base. And we saw him get a, a good walk here today, work the at-bat a little bit, make the pitcher work with some extra pitches as well. And that's something that he adds to this lineup is really making the opposing pitchers work. Former St. Louis Cardinals manager Tony La Russa, you would ask him about expectations, and he would tell you, I want to win every series because if you win every series, you're going to have a winning record. You're going to have a winning record and you're probably going to be in the yeah. playoffs. So after opening weekend where the Otters lost two of three, they go to Joliet, win two of three, and then one, two of three here this weekend. Two of three. And again, 24 hours, very tough. Um, of course, last night, game one, four nothing, just took care of business in game one last night. Patrick McGuff was really, really and, good. And, and just like Austin Isley, now he's got a couple starts underneath his belt. And again, he's not an over, overpowering guy, but again, he's able to use his defense to his advantage and pitch out of situations. Um, and a lot of new guys, we talked about that going into the season, a lot of new guys, especially with the rotation, and a lot of these guys are really stepping up and being key contributors um, to the starting five for Evansville on the mound. Major kudos to Max Peterson and Andy McCauley. The second game, which, man, you could write a book about that. Nine to eight and 11 innings. Tyler Bale gives up two home runs right. in the first inning. They were both two run right. shots. They kept patience with him. They stuck with him, yeah. And he kept them in the game and then really settled into a groove, and we saw some really good things out of him. Yeah, and obviously a much more improved start compared to the yes. last Sunday start, which, again, he started off well, and then it kind of fell apart toward the middle of the game against Washington last Sunday. 
But that's the thing with when you have an experienced guy on the mound. Yes. The coaching staff has that established trust in their guy and patience, uh, as you said. If it's a newcomer, a young guy who they had maybe not seen in, um, certain, uh, in a lot of games, like Tyler Bell, 2015, 2016, and now back this year, that trust may not be there quite yet, and then might be a quicker trigger. But again, with Tyler Bell, you know he's, a, he's an experienced guy. He knows how to get out situations. So the Otters, uh, they just got back to Evansville, and now they're going to go back on the road. They go to Windy City, who finished one game behind them last mm -hmm. year in the wild card standings. And then I know everyone's favorite <laughs> trip, maybe not the drive up to Traverse City if you're going from the Chicago area, right. but then the drive back from the top of Michigan then to Evansville, I'm sure isn't fun. So a lot of miles being logged on the bus the next oh, couple days. Yes, this is the first big road trip, and this is the first true big road trip for these guys to start to kind of come together and, and gel a little bit. Like I said, going to Windy City, they had a nice little late run last year. I'm um, off to a pretty decent start as well this season as well. Um, battling up there at, at Standard Bay Stadium later this week, Yachters. Another couple day games at 10.30 on Wednesday and Thursday, just as last week at Joliet. Um, so a lot of interesting uh, tests ahead for the Otters this week. And like I said, for Traverse City, late, uh, early evening, late afternoon start on Sunday. Then a the long bus road back to Evansville. But they'll get a couple days off before they return home against Florence. See, I feel bad, personally speaking, for Windy City's public address announcer because we had the Education Day games. One of them was at 10, mm -hmm. but the other one was at 11. We have a day camp day game that right. starts at noon. But, man, when you're a public address announcer and you have to get up at 6 o'clock, it's so hard to break that voice that <laughs> makes it sound like you just woke up. It, yeah, definitely, definitely tough. Luckily for, I guess... For the public address announcer, we have some pretty easy names this year for our side. Oh no, we, no, we, no! I'm thankful. <laughs> I'm thankful. There might have been 2013. We had a couple of doozies, and I needed a full guide. If you do have to wake up early, though, Windy City's public address announcer, I should know your name. Uh, cough drops, cough drops, Diet Pepsi, and Diet Pepsi. That's the magic recipe. Otters are back here on May 30th. That's a double header. Note the start time, it is at 5.05 .05 on Deaconess Long-Term Nursing Facility Night. And then the series finale is the first Thirsty Thursday. Special price drafts. Yeah, so what's your favorite alcoholic beverage? I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna keep that a secret. He's gonna keep it a secret. I will tell you straight up, it's the king, Budweiser. So he's Preston Leidenbach, I'm Zane Klotfelter. This has been Otters TV.